as I reported, or as I reported, as I said ages ago, right? Ages ago, ages ago, ages ago, ages ago. Brendan, for whatever reason, decided it was a good idea to lie or to obs you know what's that thing called obs obfuscate the truth, whatever it is, um, embellish that he was performing at this comedy club or at this comedy festival, sorry, in Austin called Moon Tower Festival. Um, for whatever reason, I guess the Moon Tower Comedy Festival is similar to maybe Just for Laughs in um, Montreal. I think it might be run by the same people if it's called Just for Laughs. I guess it's a big deal for comedians because I'm assuming a comedy festival similar to like a music festival. It's an opportunity to go and see loads of different people at the same time, right? And um, you don't pay that much money. So for a customer, it's obviously a good deal. You pay like 50 to to $100, I guess. You see a whole host of comedians and who knows, you might find your next favorite comp that you can go and follow around the country and around the world, bloody blah for the comedian obvious advantage to go and see new and interest no to go and um obviously try and showcase your work and your art and your skill set to an eager new interesting crowd so comedy festivals are a big deal in that regard but from what i understand from listen to comedy podcast there's also an added little sprinkling of goodness where comedy festivals are also the chance for industry people to come and see loads of talent at the same time so if you're someone on a come up or somebody that thinks you deserve a break you want a netflix special you think you're not blockbuster the good place to go and perform is at a comedy festival because it might be the opportunity for you to perform in front of somebody who's a shot caller at this production company at this club at this network whatever it may be this streaming service it's all kind of an upside and from what it from obviously brendan's lies i would assume if you're invited to the comedy festival it's a win because you're alongside some sick names so you can put that on your social media and people can feel like oh my god you're next to bill burr you're next to dan Solo, you're next to him i mean people are going to be a fan of you and also if you're headlining it's like a double double benefit because comedy festivals to headline them you've got to be a real big name because if they're headlining your comedy festival you have to be a sarah silverman type person who's going to be known to the general public and you're going to actually sell some tickets for whatever reason this guy decided to lie that he was a headliner which i don't think was a great idea because of the level of comedian he is it didn't make any sense why a comedy festival that's booking the likes of tim dylan and that would then decide to book brendan as a headliner it doesn't make any sense obviously he'll be booked in la i'm sorry in, te in texas in america doesn't matter he'll be booked in general because he's despite what we might think of him not being funny he's still a popular guy right so that makes sense why he'd get booked but why would you, you wouldn't headline him at a comedy festival. No one would do that. So he lies about it. doesn't make any sense. And everyone keeps, you know, getting at him that he's obviously lying about this comedy festival headlining. The official lineup doesn't even say he's headlining. It says he's just got added as a late addition to obviously maybe sell some tickets or whatever it may be. Or maybe he was already added and they kind of just announced it late so that they could, um, what you gonna call it? So that they could, uh so that they could maybe sell more tickets, right? Maybe he was already booked ages ago and then they announced him late so they could sell more tickets in the end. No problem, whatever the problem, whatever the point is, he got announced. The fact that he got announced anyway was a win. I thought in my head, looking at the lineup, that is a win. The win is getting announced on the lineup. For whatever reason, he doesn't think that's enough and he lies that he's headlining. And he's getting constantly trolled in his comments about not headlining. People on the T5K subreddit are emailing the organizers and checking in to see if he is headlining. And they're saying, no, he's playing at the satellite stage. So if it's another stage, it's not a headline stage. It's just embarrassing, totally embarrassing. And then he makes his post on Instagram where he's like, oh, no, Twitter is like, oh, I'm so proud of doing, like kind of pats himself on the back, you know, back in the day when I was performing, no one would book me and they would only list me down as a fighter and not as, you know, Brendan Shaw, my name, blah, 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 blah. Now I'm headlining. He obviously is not headlining. He keeps promoting it, keeps promoting it, saying he's headlining, he's not. And then now out of the blue, out of nowhere, with no real explanation as to why, he is now cancelled his appearance at the Moon Tower Comedy Festival. And it says here on the screenshot, cancelled sorry austin i'll be announcing a full weekend asap for 2022 i won't be able to make it this saturday so what three days two days before the comedy festival happens he cancels out of the blue now for my chat folks out there for my chat folks out there what do you think happened i have a couple of theories but what do you think happened here are some suggestions all right that i put up in the title all right or that put no, they put up a title um here's some things i'm thinking of did he number one get told to skedazzle because of the you know negativity around his name on social media in general 
was there an issue with low ticket sales maybe there's a thing where if you in order to get confirmed to actually perform you have to sell a certain amount of tickets and then when you sell them your comp your kind of booking gets kind of solidified or if not you have to go to smaller venues and if you don't sell you just keep going down to smaller smaller ones do you think it was because of all the controversy around annie and kalila and all those allegations that came up about the truck walk do you think it was him just not wanting to be around those people knowing that he's suing a small youtuber he threatened to sue obviously the lady supposedly or allegedly or do you just think he generally changed his mind like he said and wanted to hang around with his kids what do you guys think was the reason behind him cancelling his appearance at this comedy festival i'd love to get insight from you guys here on the chat i really would let me just read what some of you guys are saying um let me see what people are saying here Buh, 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 buh. What are people saying in the chat? Wow, man, it's mad spam, isn't it? Garrett Moore's going hard in the in the paint. Um, let's see what people are saying here. Wow, Garrett Moore's going hard in the paint. Garrett Moore's redacted. So let's say, wait, is the is the festival canted? Uh, what are people saying here? Garrett is beat as f. What's everyone saying here? Uh, hi. Uh, Definitely wants to hang with the uh, kids and be a beast of a father. Okay, maybe, maybe, who knows? Maybe it is a father thing. He's embarrassed, says Nine Tails Kyle. He cancelled because he wouldn't be in the front of his real fans. That's what I was thinking. That's another good theory too, um, Mr. Singh. Great one. Maybe that's the reason too, because weirdly enough, in Brendan Schub's comedy career, I don't know why he's done this. It's a very interesting approach. I guess when you're a comedian coming up, you just go and perform anywhere. You just go and get some minutes, get some reps in. And then I guess the hope is that you build enough you, build, you get enough reps in that you become funny and then you hope at the end of the day you get more bookings and then you get more fans from playing more, more places and then those fans come and see you wherever you play but then you still keep getting the reps in in between he did it the other way he got some reps in maybe did the whole trying to play random places didn't like it and now only plays basically for his fans essentially he even though it's not really a live show he basically does a live show because he only really promotes his specials to his fans because I wouldn't imagine there's many Brendan Shaw stand-up comedy and fans sorry is that making sense i sound african there i don't think there's many brendan shaw fans who don't know him because of the podcast they all come through the podcast so you're obviously only playing to your audience it's not as if you're playing to like random people it's a very interesting approach so maybe this Moontown Comedy Festival will be the first time he's actually played at like a neutral venue where no one knows who he is and there'll be just random people popping in just to check out what he's doing. Um, I'm not really too sure, but it's a very weird, weird, weird approach. Oh, we got a super chat. What's super chat saying here? Big up, Joe. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you. Uh, Brendan threatening Trash Tuesdays and losing comedians' respect while very low ticket sales is my guess. Okay, so you're, you're saying the two things, Joe. Okay, you're saying the two things. Trash Tuesdays, suspect, and very low tickets. The ticket sales I'm not too sure about because from what I'm from what I understand, those satellite passes grant you access to all the satellite stages. It's not like you're buying a ticket to go and see certain comedians. You're just buying a ticket to go to a stage, similar to like a, a music festival. You buy a ticket and maybe it's a different tier in terms of VIP and whatnot, but it's still a ticket to see all the bands. So it's not like you can sell, you can't sell tickets. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Maybe the the, the mechanic, the mechanism behind it is different than what I know, but it doesn't really seem like that would be a ticket sell thing. Or maybe I'm reading it wrong. I'm not really too sure. But it's a very weird way to go about doing things. It really, really is. And then to make matters worse, of course, on the actual lineup, the final lineup, he's obviously not on there anymore. He's completely been taken off. And the funny thing is about this final lineup, like I said before, the fact that he's on this lineup, <clears throat> on the side, does that make sense? No, the fact that he was even featured, right? The fact that he was even featured on this lineup should have been a win in itself. Because look at the names Sarah Silverman, um, who did I recognize here? Oh, let's continue. Andrew Santino, Bobby Lee, Big J. Okerson, Dan Soda, Dion Cole, Jimmy O. Yang is shit, but let's continue. Mark Marin, obviously a legend. Mark Norman, someone I'm a big fan of. Nikki Glazer, hate, you know, all those fucking pussy jokes and stuff. I'm not a fan of it at all, but she's a great podcaster and a great radio host. Pete Holmes, lovely guy, great comedian. Tim Dillon, great. Trevor Wallace, that he's the guy on TikTok and stuff. He's really funny. I like him. Um, are you garbage guys? One of 
of the best podcasters out there actually com- involving comedians um, I don't know anyone else Christina P from Your Mum's House Don't know Rawlings like these are amazing Jessica Kearson come on one of the best one of the best out there to do the thing Moshe Kasher like this is a win that is a win if you're on this list of names that should be enough of a win you don't need to lie that you're headlining I really do not understand it I really don't get it I really really don't maybe I'm I'm making too much I'm making more of it than what it is but that's one of the things that very much puzzled me when it comes to Brendan and his kind of way of going about his business and stuff I just don't understand that but to be fair to him if I just take a step back and look at it from a performance point of view maybe the point that you would lie would be so that you would give the impression that you're bigger that you're bigger than you are in the hopes that more people would want to see you or no, but in the hopes that the people that make the decisions in the in the industry would then give you better gigs but then that doesn't make sense does it because if you're in the industry you know who's headlining and who's not you don't get duped because i don't feel for a customer maybe tell me in the chat you guys as a customer do you care who headlines like if you were if you went imagine if you're going to a music festival when I go to music festivals, I see the bands I want to go and see. It doesn't matter who's headlining. Yes, a headline is a good thing. But if I want to see a smaller band that no one really knows about, I imagine if I want to go see like a band called Nails, right? One of my like favorite like metal bands or whatnot. And they're playing at a festival. They won't be the headliners most likely. They might be in the supporting on, on like a stage somewhere else, but I'm still going to go watch them. So I don't really understand this idea of like lying your headliner because we don't care as customers and as consumers or as civilians as Joe Rogan calls us and the people in the industry, they know that you're not headlining. They know. They know you're not headlining because they are in the industry. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't make any sense really. I don't really know why the why he does that personally, but you know, who knows? Who knows? Let's get this thing off the screen quickly. Let's see what the chat's saying here. What are you guys saying? Uh um, he embellished hard yet Pete Holmes I agree wait he said he was headlining out of all yes exactly 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 and what's a, what's your n- n- uh, username Mr. Womp Womp Fam or Lamb yeah imagine he wait he said he was headlining out of all those comedians imagine headlining saying you're headlining out of all those big names how does that make sense um Jess Ferry says he embellished hard. Of course he did. James Picone says, I only watched his comedy sh- to see how lame it was and why everyone was making fun of him. Fair enough. Mr. Singh said multiple times. Scale Dice said he's worried about other comedians calling him out. Maybe, maybe, who knows? Shame Callan didn't see it. Set him straight, says the rinks about just doing the festival regardless of promo alone is a new special would be in good. Yeah, the rinks. I don't get it. If you're promoting a special, if you're promoting a new comedy special that's meant to be coming out, what, next week, you'd imagine going to a comedy festival, regardless if it goes well or not for you, will be a win because everyone's looking. The eyes of the world are on you. But, you know, for whatever reason, he didn't think that would be the right thing to do. So, you know, it's his career. Um, Nels is dope. Yeah, Big Up Flavor Aid. He's putting the special on YouTube because he do not show the likes here no more and you can't see the ratings. Yep, yeah, True Justice, um, our. I ag so justice Agerton. You are right in that thing, but I don't know, man. <sighs> Hopefully he keeps he keeps everything open. Because I think if he keeps everything open, regardless if he gets trolled, the engagement is gonna be crazy. Crazy. Like I have already predicted. I think that special will do like a million views in a week easy. Like in a seven day period that'll do a million. If he just keeps it online and doesn't do because imagine what you'd be surprised got imagine the views you'd be surprised got behind it we don't know what the views are the stats are on showtime but i bet you'd be surprised special is in the double digit millions in terms of views so i can just imagine what it'll be like now um what else is it people are saying here uh blah 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 he wants to be super famous said mr singh that's it that's all he gives a shit about fuck him <laughs> fair enough brutal Nine tells Kyle says Annie Lederman is one of the most respected female comedians you can tell because even the Legion of Skanks praise her. Yeah, the Annie Lederman thing is interesting, isn't it? Because there was a someone put up a little, I think maybe she put it up on her stories that she was going to support Joe while she was in LA. So Joe was in LA performing at the comedy store and she was supporting him, you know. And obviously Brendan wasn't there. Um, interesting isn't it what a weird move if that story is true and it was Brendan who asked her for a drug walk why would you do that Annie was always like from what I could see Joe's always kind of grooming Annie to be like the next big female comic he kind of really likes her and thinks she's really funny and she's clearly tapped in with everybody and quite outspoken and stuff like 
I don't see how you couldn't see if that went wrong. It would go really, really wrong. Re such a bad move, really, really bad move. He ended up shooting himself in the foot, really. So it'd be interesting if he does go on Rogan, whether or not Rogan ends up bringing it up. Will he bring it up and say, hey, you were messed up there, you shouldn't have done that, blah -de blah 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 I'm not really too sure, to be honest, but let's see what I'll go on, and we'll see when that happens.